I've always been someone who hops on video game trends super late. When Fortnite was big, I didn't start until season 4. You know, like when Dusty Depot turned into Dusty Divot. And I didn't own a Sony console until 2021, so I've missed out on a lot of phenomenal games in my lifetime. But one of the biggest regrets I have when it comes to playing video games is that I truly didn't play PC games until I built this beauty last year. Now, I had a laptop up to this point. All it could really do is play a poorly optimized version of Minecraft back during its peak popularity. But one of the games I knew of, yet missed out on, was Team Fortress 2. Like many others, I found out about this game through the magic of SFM animations on YouTube. Did I know the name of the game? No, but I found the videos hilarious. See, on my old Steam account, I actually tried to play Team Fortress 2. But because my old laptop was terrible, I ceased all future efforts and probably went and played some sports game or something. But after building my lovely computer with the money I made working as an underpaid, overworked summer camp counselor, I was in business. And it's only fitting that the first game I truly played on my brand new machine was the one that had eluded me for years prior. Now, before I delve into my time with Team Fortress 2, I just want to preface this video by saying that this will be the only content I create regarding TF2. As much as I love the game and how much I've loved playing it over the past few months, I can understand that I'm not the proper person to create content regarding Team Fortress 2. I have a surface level amount of knowledge for things like the game's weapons, loadouts, history, and things of that nature. And like every other video on my channel, I just make videos on stuff that I find interesting at the time. So while I foresee myself putting a few more hundred hours into Team Fortress 2, that's not going to warrant any additional videos. Oh, and happy 17th anniversary Team Fortress 2. I just thought it was fitting since I'm releasing the video the day after. It was June 1st, 2023, when I first began playing at the heavy, repeated recommendation of my roommate slash favorite engineer main, and it was a bit to get used to. I'm not the biggest fan of first person shooter games, mostly because I don't possess the mental capabilities or reflexes fast enough to be good at any of them and have a fun time with them. But TF2's reliance on movement, strategy, and loadouts really helped me find playstyles I could ease into before I truly dove into the game. Out of the nine different playable classes in Team Fortress 2, the first one I played was Scout. And no, this isn't anything fancy like the Milkman or Bonk Boy. This is just plain old scattergun and pistol scout. I did, however, equip the atomizer just for that third jump and its mobility options. While a basic build, it got me started out with something I had some familiarity with. Other shooter games, you're encouraged to play risky since you can take a bunch of hits and still be able to fight. But with a light class such as scout, running headfirst into a battle very rarely resulted in me as the victor. So in order to get good, I was forced to learn the map layouts, mobility tricks, and strategy that came when picking my battles due to the opposing player classes and location. This is what separates Team Fortress 2 from any other shooter I've ever played, and why I love it so much. The genre hero shooter doesn't necessarily fit TF2. Other games have fixed playstyles with all their different heroes, Support classes are expected to stay back in support, attacking classes are meant to be attacking, you get it. But due to all of the crazy amounts of weapon combinations there are in TF2, there's no one set way to play a specific class, although some are more foolproof than others, and are what most players stick to. I myself have become quite fond of the subclass Huntsman Sniper. Normally, as Sniper, your shots are registered if a player is in your reticle at the time you press the mouse to fire. But with the Huntsman, you actually have an arrow that physically launches from your bow, and can hit players who just so happen to walk into it. 
it's a better way to handle mid to close range enemies, since all you need to do is aim slightly up and tap the mouse 1 button to fire an arrow. My roommate has turned a defensive support class in Engineer into an unstoppable attacking machine with the Battle Engineer subclass, where he's really aggressive in the way that he pushes an attack and plants his mini sentries, always ready to deploy another if the current one breaks. It's really impressive to watch, actually. One of the more personal reasons why I enjoy TF2 is that it doesn't make you rely on your hearing, which as someone who is partially deaf in my right ear, I can appreciate. Shocker, the deaf guy can't hear where the footsteps are coming from in CS2 and proceeds to get ridiculed in chat with slurs and a bunch of rude comments. But in TF2, audio cues are so minor and are often hard to hear with how much is going on. If you're near a sentry, there's no way you're hearing anything with all the beeping and firing of missiles. It's one of the few games I can play with one headphone in my bad ear so I can hear the action in-game, and keep one ear open for real-world events like if a crazed axe-wielding killer were to break into my apartment. While some classes aren't difficult to get good at, they all have a massive skill ceiling. The game can be very technical at times, with techniques such as rocket jumping, detonator jumping, sticky bomb jumping, a lot of these involve jumping. But these techniques change the way you play the game and offer a whole new avenue of possibilities when it comes to your loadout, methods of killing, and how much fun you have with the game. Other shooters I've played, such as Counter-Strike 2, have prepared me for how I play my main class, Sniper. But even with a near 200 combined hours between CS2 and TF2, I'm just a novice compared to some of the snipers I've come across in casual games. I don't know all of the lineups, and a lot of my shots tend to miss. But whenever I end up getting killed by an opposing player, most likely a sniper, I can't help but laugh because they just got the better of me that time. TF2 is a hard game to rage at, since everybody in the game knows that it's a low stakes, have fun kind of thing. You're not going to get called slurs for failing to defend a point or not pushing a cart. And that's really welcoming to beginners, especially when I first began playing. Before matches, people will just be waiting in the spawn area, doing taunts that the other people can join in on and have fun with, even if they themselves haven't purchased the taunt. Opposing players will come up to the gate that separates both teams and spam their melee or taunts, since everybody's just here to have a good time. And I love it. It never gets old. And I've been playing tons of matches per day, so if it were to get old, I'd be feeling it. But when I was getting into the groove of the game, about 50 or 60 hours in, it just became unplayable due to the sheer amount of bots plaguing every game I went into. I'm sure many of you Team Fortress 2 players know of the Fix TF2 movement, but for those who don't, botting has been a pretty big issue in the community for years up to this point. Bot hosting servers would put bots in game that were able to lock onto players from all the way across the map and one-shot them, making the game damn near impossible if you're up against a whole team of them. There are also some bots that would flood the voice chat with loud, annoying music, demanding a ransom in order to turn it off. See, it actually helps to be hearing impaired at times. This led to a massive community project called Fix TF2 to get Valve off their asses and stop the botting crisis. It may seem like I'm talking about this out of nowhere, but it prevented me from playing the game that I was really getting into for nearly a whole year before I picked it back up again a few months ago and absolutely fell in love with it. The Fix TF2 movement had players sign petitions and refuse to interact with the game's loot crate market so that Valve couldn't get any more of their money from a game that they don't even support anymore. Players were flooding the Steam page with negative reviews, detailing the current state of the game and its hordes of bots. People were even destroying limited time items that held real world value. I'm not exactly sure what that accomplished, but you really showed Valve, I suppose. But out of nowhere, Valve seemingly swooped in overnight and fixed the issue. 
New botting accounts were getting banned on the spot, and every account that had been tormenting the TF2 player base was wiped from the planet. It was great. Especially seeing some of these little fuckers complain that their bot hosting service wasn't working anymore. Eat a dick. The game wouldn't have been able to be fixed without the continued efforts of its players to return the game to a playable state. So I am personally thankful for everybody who is involved, since it got me back into the game after a long hiatus due to the botting crisis. Speaking of the community, outside of the game, there are a ton of talented fans creating projects using SFM Filmmaker or making fan art, be it safe for work or explicit. But even 17 years later, the community is still thriving, which is just a testament to how good the game is. And that's why it's so confusing to me that Valve is choosing to create a new hero shooter, supposedly blending aspects of CS2, TF2, Dota, and all sorts of online multiplayer games. Wow, Deadlock is already experiencing its first round of cheaters and the game isn't even out of beta yet. Valve being Valve. But it's odd why they're choosing to make this. CS2 is pulling over a million players a day, and despite the issues that people have with the game, they all seem to come back and play regardless. TF2 obviously has a very passionate community, willing to tank the status of their own game in order to sound a message to Valve. And while I might not know much about Dota 2, just based on the Steam charts, it's got a big audience as well. Although I know it's splitting fans with games like League of Legends. So, when you have three of the most popular games across three different genres, why would you try and create another game that blends aspects of those three together? It's just extremely illogical since they've all but abandoned adding new content to TF2, and CS2 received its first batch of new maps in forever, which I greatly appreciated over the summer, and the extent of Dota 2's updates have been balancing or bug fixes so nothing substantial. Why not focus your efforts on these three games, working together with the community to find out what might be the best things to add or alter? Community members have been making maps for TF2, and they're great! While I'm not going to end up playing Deadlock, I'm sure since it's a Valve game, it'll draw a huge player base, and it'll go through the Valve game cycle until it gets plagued with bots and cheaters by the year 2035. I've just really enjoyed my time playing TF2 ever since I picked it back up at the end of summer. It's a game that I can play every day and still have so much to learn and grow with. I've only slightly learned two classes in Scout and Sniper, and I am nowhere close to the level of other players within those classes. But every class has enticed me with its playstyle. Sometimes I might want to be supportive and set up defensive sentries that are super well hidden and will rack up tons of kills. Or I might want to be able to rocket jump high above enemies and kill them with the market gardener just because it's abnormal and fun. Even if Valve chooses not to update the game for the rest of time, I'm going to be able to put in so much playtime mastering each class and subclass that the game has to offer, and I'm certain that others would do the same. While my short time with Team Fortress 2 has been different than other players, that's exactly how it should be. I haven't gotten to experience major updates and all the changes that would come with them, so I've never had to readjust my playstyle due to balancing patches or new weapons that come out. All I know is that I've been having an extremely fun time with the game. Combing through footage for this video was difficult since there were so many instances where I was just outplayed due to my more limited play experience, but it helps me realize areas where I need to improve. I'm going to continue to play, most likely every day that I can, because the game is just so fun and it doesn't get stale. I want to learn how to play every class at a decent level so I can be reliable and fill in wherever I'm needed in a match. I'm actually purchasing cosmetics and trying to get my loadouts to look decent. Thankfully, I'm not gambling, since I already do that all the time with sports. 
But I've mostly stuck with the secondhand market where items are like 50 cents and won't break my bank account since I don't necessarily want strange or unusual items. God, I really fell down the rabbit hole, didn't I? I apologize if this video wasn't exactly what you're looking for. I just wanted to detail my experience with the game from the time I began playing, through the bot crisis, and now when I am dedicated to pouring in at least an hour into it daily. But if you've stuck around at this point, I really appreciate it. Even though I'm not making any more Team Fortress 2 videos, if any of my content looks interesting, it would mean a lot to me if you'd like and subscribe. I really do want to hear your experiences with the game. Things like history, updates, lore, loadouts, just funny moments that could happen to you in a random match. I already hear a ton of that from my roommate, so it might as well be worth it to hear from you guys too. Thank you so much for watching. I've been recording and editing this for god knows how long now. So I'm gonna go and get my daily fix of TF2 now.